With all the news that been coming out, Team Keep It Clean, trust me, I'm just as shocked as you are. Cooper Cup is the latest receiver who apparently is not just available by the Rams, but the Rams are actively looking to move on from him. And it seems like they straight up just trying to get rid of him because this is what Diana Rossini said, said that the Rams have called multiple teams. So the Rams are the one making the calls. They like, look, hey, we got a Cooper Cup. We trying to, if you want to take him over our hands, feel free. But they've been calling multiple teams about trading uh, for Cooper Cup. And it says the Rams have indicated a willingness to take on some of his 2024 salary and are seeking a second round pick. So the Rams, not only are they trying to move on from Cooper Cup, but they like, look, we'll pay for it. We'll, we'll, we'll pay for it. Oh, we want a little second round pick. We'll, we'll pay for it. Now, I know they're going to be Ravens fans that are like, hey, do you not see Rashad Bateman out there killing it? Oh, I see it. I see it, and I love it. They're going to say, do you not see Zay Flowers out there killing it? Hey, I, I see it, and I love it. I love it. I love it. But it would not hurt to get even better at the position even stronger at the position even wiser at the position especially if that salary is accounted for oh, pff, oh please man like now I, I one thing i will say cooper cup he is not the receiver that i feel would be something else that i mean he could he could definitely help the baltimore ravens but the prototypical wide receiver that I think would be the best fit right now for the Baltimore Ravens would be big body, jump ball guy, somebody like that, to add another element to the passing offense of the Baltimore Ravens, to give Lamar Jackson that go up and get it guy. I mean, he got that with Mark Andrews, though. He got that with Isaiah Likely, though. They could be like, you know what? For the jump ball, just throw it up to the tight ends. I mean, they can go up and get it. They can. So, because with, with, with Cooper Cup. He's like a more experienced combination. Well, nah, not combination, because he ain't he ain't that shifty as Zay Flowers. I don't think anybody is. But um, he's almost like a more experienced Rashad Bateman when it comes to the route running and just getting separation, getting open. And Cooper Cup obviously obviously got some good hands too. He's good at run blocking. He's a great receiver. He really is. And then, you know the Ravens, they liked him when he was coming out of the draft. They obviously didn't get him, and it's a good thing that they didn't get him because had they got him, then he probably would not be the Cooper Cup that he is today. But it is something to think about because again I, I take you back okay, right Ravens are, they always been a good running team especially since Lamar's been around they always been a good running team but what did they do this offseason they went and got that guy at the running back position and look how much he has elevated the Baltimore Ravens that being Derrick Henry of course so right now they're a good passing team they're a really good passing team and we love it so imagine if they got somebody who was one of those guys and added him to what they already got. That can make them even better, even stronger, even more diverse. But I know what we're going to say, but wait. Engraving, are you not watching the games? I know you watch the games. You live stream every single one. So you must be watching the same games we're watching. Do you not see the defense? The defense is an issue. The defense is a problem. The defense is a stain on these Baltimore Ravens. Do you not see them? And yeah, I, I, I see them. Oh, we watch the games together. We all see them. And the defense has been rough. But again, the issue with the defense, in my opinion, if I continue to say this, it's more scheme than anything. Guys are just not being put in positions to have success. Uh, offensive players are running wide open against this Baltimore Ravens defense. So in my opinion, it's not player that's the issue. It's the scheme. It's coaching. But real quick, back to Cooper Cup, because the Rams are apparently looking for a second-round pick. My guy Osai. He took the pleasure. He took the liberty in just dropping a list of all the Baltimore Ravens' recent second-round picks. And I appreciated him for this. He said 2024 was Roger Rosengarden. 2023, they didn't have one. 2022 was David Ajabo. 2021, nobody. 2020 was J.K. Dobbins. Uh, 2019, 2018, they didn't have one. 2017 was Tyus Bowser. 2016 was Camille Correa. 2015 was Max Williams. And 2014 was Timmy Jernigan. I will let you do with that information whatever you choose to. That's up to you. He said he just wanted to present it to everybody. So there we go. Now, like we said earlier, I know most people would be thinking like, oh, like we don't need any offensive players. Our offense is good. And, hey, the offense is great. 
And that's amazing. I wouldn't be mad if they got even better, though. But anyway, what about the defensive side of the ball? What could the Baltimore Ravens use on the defensive side of the ball in addition to the scheme getting better? But will the scheme really change? Will there be any adjustments made to it, any significant alterations made to the Baltimore Ravens defensive scheme? It's something to think about. Because we know, like, look, straight up, the, the defense has been bad, but Zach Orr is not going anywhere. He's not leaving. He's not getting fired. We talked about it uh, in the postgame thoughts video with Zach Orr. He started as an undrafted free agent, became an all-pro, got injured, and then he ended up, Ravens put him on a coaching staff. Then he ended up being a linebacker coach, and he ended up being a defensive coordinator. So he literally been with the Ravens through every single step of his career with him being family to the Baltimore Ravens. He is not going anywhere so you gotta hope for the best now um I know a lot of people say okay what about max crosby i hey i wouldn't be mad at that at all i don't think it's gonna go down but i wouldn't be mad at max crosby at all but apparently the baltimore ravens they've been doing some sniffing on another defensive end and who is that oh it's a familiar face that they drafted some years back and then they tried to sign a couple years ago. They tried to bring him back home, and apparently they had a deal. They had a deal in place. And they, it wasn't announced by the Ravens, but it was one of those deals that happened before, the, um, before free agency officially starts. You know, that two-day tamper, legal tampering period. It's the stupidest thing ever. I wish they would just get rid of that. But anyway, Zadarius Smith. And you may say, hold up. Zadarius Smith, former Baltimore Raven, former Packer, I'm a Vic Hold up, he ain't on the Browns ain't, That's in the division Well, according to Brad Stainbrook Who covers the Browns, he said The Detroit Lions, the Washington Commanders And the Baltimore Ravens Are just a few of the teams Who have talked with the Cleveland Browns Regarding defensive end Zadarius Smith oh, I'm saying, Ooh, okay, Ravens Y'all, that's how y'all feeling? Y'all talking to the Browns about a potential trade, in-season trade within the division? Ooh, 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 I like it. But let's just read the article first. It says, following the Amari Cooper trade last week, multiple teams are calling the Cleveland Browns regarding the availability of defensive ends to Darius Smith. The Baltimore Ravens, the Detroit Lions, and the Washington Commanders are just a few of the teams who have talked with Cleveland regarding the veteran player, a league source tells TheOBR.com. As of last week, Andrew Barry was hesitant to trade away Smith, but as the team continues to, take, to tally more losses, Cleveland's chances of unloading the veteran for another draft pick will likely increase. So, Cleveland, like, look, we weren't being good. We weren't good before Deshaun Watson went out. We certainly not going to be good after Deshaun Watson with him being done for the season. And they also, with Dorian Thompson Robinson, um, he also, he got like a, a thumb injury on his throwing hand. One of his, is his thumb or one of his, one of his fingers on his throwing hand. He's dealing with that, so he's going to be wearing a splint. So he, I don't think he's going to be available this, this upcoming Sunday. They said he's going to wear the splint as he recovers, but the Browns just signed Bailey Zapp to their active roster. So they have Jameis Winston and Bailey Zapp. So most likely the Ravens are going to be going against Jameis Winston. So there's that. But anyway, the Browns are like, look, we, th this ain't the year for us. So we willing to unload whoever, wherever. Let's go. So the, the Ravens called them about Zadarius Smith, but what I would prefer, and I know like it's a, it's a long shot. It's a, it's a much longer shot than Max Crosby is. And I, I, I just, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> y'all know where I'm going to. I wonder, like, if, you, if you're willing to call about Zadarius Smith, why not just stay on the phone for a couple minutes longer and talk to them about Miles? Get, might as well. Talk to them about Miles. It couldn't hurt. He ain't happy over there. Miles Garrett, like, man, look, I'm one of the best defensive linemen in the league to ever do it. I'm wasting my time here. Get me out of here. Save me. Ravens, save him. So Darius Smith done burned y'all a couple years ago when it was looking like, oh, yeah, the Ravens agreed to a deal with Darius Smith. He's coming back home. Then he said, er, nope, I ain't going back to the Ravens. That ain't happening. So he, he burned you once. Let it go. And I know the Baltimore Ravens, they love, if they really like somebody, they love circling back for him. So I would not be surprised if something happens with this Darius Smith. But. They got another defensive end on that team that I would much rather the Baltimore Ravens really take a look at and try to pry away from Cleveland.
Now, just to give y'all a little reminder, just because you're good at something, it does not mean that you can't get even better and even stronger at it. Like we talked about, in previous years, the Baltimore Ravens have been an excellent rushing team. Always on the ground. They, they've been doing that thing for years. But Adam Derrick Henry has made them even better. But get this stat. This is such a crazy statistic. Listen to this. This came from Gordon McGinnis. He said, Derrick Henry has more rushing yards through seven games than any Ravens running back other than Mark Ingram in 2019 have had in a full regular season since Lamar Jackson came in the league in 2018. So Derrick Henry, right now again, Ravens have been known, especially with Lamar Jackson, to, to be a run dominant team. But the, did you did you hear that statistic? Let's read it again. I don't think you heard it. It says Derrick Henry has more rushing yards through just seven games. Seven games. Still got ten games left. He got more rushing yards through seven games than any Ravens running back other than Mark Ingram from 2019 has had in a regular full season since Lamar Jackson came in the league. See how, see how that's what I be talking about. Make a strength even stronger so it can be dominant. Speaking of dominance, Ronnie Stanley, he, he going to make this tough at the end of the year. If he keeps this up, he going to make it tough at the end of the year for the Baltimore Ravens when they got to make a decision to either let Ronnie Stanley go or keep him around. Because Ronnie Stanley, let's look at these numbers too. It says he has zero pressures allowed on 26 pass blocking snaps against the Bucks blitz heavy defense. So he did not allow a single pressure obviously not a set but not a single pressure nothing ronnie stanley said hey i'm team keep lamar clean all day every day so shout out to number 79 also there was zero sacks allowed and we're not talking we're not even talking about just the bucks game no 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 it's deeper than that because he said this is zero sacks allowed this season across 224 pass blocking snaps so Ronnie Stanley has not allowed a single sack on Lamar Jackson. It says only left tackle with he's the only left tackle with 50 plus pass blocking snaps and zero sacks. The only one. The only one. Ronnie Stanley's like, look, hey, y'all, y'all redid my contract. Y'all really y'all making me work for this thing. Okay. I got y'all, Ravens. Watched it. He's been showing us. He's been showing us. This is the Ronnie Stanley that want this is the ronnie stanley that we've been hoping for for years this is the one that people would talk about like oh man ronnie stanley he's one so good but then the injuries happen this is a healthy ronnie stanley and he's been amazing uh, we always are quick to call out somebody when they're struggling when they're not doing the best and when they're just not doing as good as we know they can do so that's why it's important when they are doing a good job to give them their credit todd monkin and Lamar Jackson, they have just been taking things to a whole nother level uh, this season. But I remember a couple of years ago, they uh, Greg Roman under his offense, um, he had people thinking that, man, this guy Lamar Jackson, all you got to do to beat him is blitz him. That's it. To, to beat him, you blitz him. Simple as that. And he had a lot of people fooled. Had a lot of people thinking, man, Lamar Jackson, when it comes to the blitz, he, he can't handle it. He can't take it. He don't know what to do. But Todd Munger said, hmm. That's not accurate. That's not true. That's that's false information, and I'm not with that. Because last night says that uh, Lamar Jackson was blitzed on 61.5 percent of his dropbacks. That's a lot. That's like that's more than half more than half of the times that he dropped back. Buck said we sending it. But uh, per next gen stats, that's the third highest rate for a Lamar Jackson game, regular or postseason. So that's the third highest rate for him. Period. In his career uh, But versus the Blitz Lamar Jackson He went 11 for 15 So he only missed 4 passes uh, And threw for 166 yards And 3 touchdowns Had 148.9 passing rating But those numbers like that That's showing you like hey Lamar he got it Hey Todd Munkin he got it And it's just It continues to show you the growth man that's something that's super, super important when it comes to offensive coordinator and the quarterback. Really, just the offense as a whole. Growth is everything. With Greg Roman, um, 
there was just there would be limited growth and it just felt like, and we would always have conversations about it. we would talk about how it just feels like with greg roman that offense they were just holding lamar jackson and the ravens back they were holding him back but you see with todd monkey just in a year and a half it ain't even been a full two years and we've seen so like astronomical growth even from last season to this season and you got to give him his flowers. Shout out to Zay. Now, there's plenty more news that we got to cover, but I wanted to make sure we got to my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Let's get straight into it. First question came from my guy, Brian. He said, I don't trust Zach or man. Uh, this roster is better than last year's on defense. Mm. All right, he said Geno Stone is 79 out of 80 uh, When it comes to safeties And Steelers fans are already wanting a refund on Patrick Queen The defensive scheme is hurting us bad I wish Ravens would make something happen Robert Sala isn't on the team right now I don't want the good old boy system the Ravens love To ruin another championship year for us and, uh, Hey that's He's he just being honest he, he don't want just because they family He don't want it to get in the way of business And I get it and hey it's a scheme, man. It's a scheme. Because you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, yeah, trade for a pass rush, get a pass rush, get a pass rush, get a defensive end. And cool, I get it, but what happened to our pass rush? Early this season, our pass rush was doing their thing. Our pass rush was like a strength. They were doing their thing. Like, uh, Adolphia Wade was doing his thing. Obviously, Kyle Vinoy, he was doing his thing. Uh, Matt Abike, like, uh, Travis, Just they were doing their thing. What happened? I don't know what happened. They still been playing. They all been healthy. So, I, I just... I, I don't I don't get where the issue has come from or where the way it stemmed from. Anyway, he said also, I will eat my words. I have been a Rashad Bateman pessimist for years. And he has proven me wrong. He's that guy. I love it. Next question also came from another team, keep it clean, patron, my guy Devin. He said, Hey man, hope all is well. You were spot on with the bait and Lamar connection, constantly getting better. We have enough offensive weapons for different people to eat each game. Oh yeah, they all been at the table. They all been at the table and we love it. Love it. Uh, he said, also, this past defense worries me, but I think they'll find their groove before the end of the season. Hopefully. Ooh, that's... <laughs> Hopefully. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patron, my guy, Thomas. He said, yo, Engraven, I hope you're doing good. We're doing pretty good. I hope you're doing even better, Thomas. Uh, can I just say, can we appreciate the fact that we have four Baltimore Ravens in the top five ESPN leaders list in the week of week six? He said, we have offensive leaders. J Lamar Jackson is number five for passing. Not bad for a running back. Russian leaders. King Henry is number one. Defensive leaders. Roquan Agent Zero is number two for tackles. And interceptions, Mr. Marlin Punchline Humphrey is tied for number two. Oh, yeah. I hope your family is well and keep up the good work with the content. And like my patience for the secondary lately, I'm out. But then in parentheses, he put, they will get better. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean, patient. My guy, Keontae. He said, this team is starting to feel like last year, but the offense is 10 times better. Yeah, they are like, whoa. Uh, he said, I'm standing on business even more. Uh, we need nothing at the deadline. Full send, no new teammates. How about the bounce back for Mark Andrews? Okay, I mean, I, I, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. But again, I, I said it. Ravens did not need a Derrick Henry. They didn't need him, but they got him, and you see the dominance. Look how dominant they are. So just because you don't need something don't mean you should not go and get it, especially when it comes to a football team. But he also said uh, the defense needs to communicate. I don't think the problem is uh, those guys, but it's the fact that they are not communicating at all yeah again scheme is over the team right now and it's hurting lamar is elite ravens fans say it with your chest next question came from my guy andrew he said dang raven has been a minute but hope all is well with the fam everything is great i appreciate you drew he said um but much love as always from the uk shout out to the uk man he said so i'm off of twitter x but what always used to bother me was the constant comparisons between lamar jackson and his contemporaries and joe burrow and josh allen uh so now i will tell you um for your sanity, it's probably a good thing to get off Twitter because Twitter, like, oh, it, it, it could drive you crazy if you let it. So that's why it, it, you, you made the right decision on, you know what, I'm out of here. Bye. But anyway, he said, uh, so not to say that any of those dudes are scrubs. Obviously, they can ball. Uh, but that being said, a recent stat uh, I came across following Lamar's performance yesterday, which was that Lamar now has 20 plus games with three plus touchdowns, which got, you, got me thinking, what are his contemporaries doing? Well, Josh Allen has 24 games with three or more. Uh, Joe Burrow has 18. 
Given the benefit of the doubt, uh, they both had injuries, but Lamar has missed a similar amount of time, both through injury, but also the fact that in his first year, he, unlike them, wasn't a starter. Josh Allen wasn't at first, but the Ravens end up, Josh Allen, they always thank the Ravens because they ended up making him a starter because in week one of 2018, I actually actually went to that game. It's a, it's a vlog on the channel too, but um, in week one of 2018, the Ravens played the Bills. Uh, and Nathan Peterman was the Bills starting quarterback. And they had even made a hype video for Nathan Peterman and all. They made a hype video for Nathan Peterman. Uh, he came into the game, threw a couple of picks and whatnot, got sacked. And at the end of the game, they put Josh Allen in. Josh Allen, I think he drove down the field. I think he even, even scored. But um, that was the start of the Josh Allen era in Buffalo. So Buffalo Bills fans, you're welcome. Uh, anyway, he said, uh, we can also factor in Lamar has never had a true uh, number one wideout like Jamar Chase or Stephon Diggs. Don't get me wrong. We have had good receivers, just never a transcending game changing receiver. So I say this respectfully and with all my chest, Lamar is elite and all the excuses that people keep making for why he isn't are for the birds. But Flock Nation, say it with your chest. Lamar is elite. Much love. Appreciate that. Now, um, I, I, I take it a step further, though. I'll say again, Lamar Jackson is not just elite. He is the best quarterback in the NFL and the best player in the world. I say that with my chest. Zach or doing too much. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, hey, team, keep it clean. Do you see this like I do? Or is doing too much with trying to disguise what coverage we are in and is putting guys in bad positions from the jump? Hmm. So at this point, he needs to just strip it down to the basics. I also think that's why Roquan has been looking so bad as well. Uh, he's not putting players at their strengths other than Kyle Hamilton because he can do it all. Roe is a sideline, a sideline linebacker. He is not a coverage linebacker, and they still have not replaced Queen's production in the passing game. He was our best coverage linebacker. And the guy they drafted to replace him, Simpson isn't even on the field on passing plays. So you have Roe trying to do something he's never been great at, and it's hurting our defense. Well, that's my thoughts. I send love to you and the family and team. Keep it clean. And I'm out, just like our defense during the fourth quarter. <laughs> That's a sad reality, my friend. That's an interesting um, thought about it. Just really, Zach Orr, I don't want to say dumbing it down, because I hate that term, dumbing it down, because it makes it sound like people are stupid, and obviously nobody is. Um, but just, yeah, making it more basic, making the defense more basic, not trying to disguise. Maybe what he could do, because I, I really like that suggestion. I, I really like that. Maybe what he could do is – Sort of just work on the basics, work on the fundamentals, just work, just have a basic defense. I, should I even say vanilla defense? Uh, maybe not go that far, but just have a basic defense and then just start adding tweaks here and there. But, hey, maybe you might not be able to disguise your coverage so good. Okay, well, just go execute. Just work on doing the basic stuff first. Then add wrinkles as time goes on so people get more comfortable with the basic stuff. So then you can add stuff here and there. Okay, you comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah I am, coach. All right, cool. Let's do it. So because the, the, the defense, again, it, it's, it's, it's simple stuff. Well, I guess I can't say it's simple stuff because being a defensive coordinator, that's a really tough job. Playing in the NFL is a really tough job. Being a defender in the league is tough. But I, I, I do like that, stripping it down to the basic. The basic. And, again, for, for us, we see it, like you mentioned, with Trent Simpson, that man in pass cover, he looked pretty good. He looked pretty good. Much better than Roquan Smith, much better than Malik Harris. He, he looked really good. He's been our best coverage linebacker. I remember even one game, I think he was, he was matched up with Rasheed Rice for one game. Another game, he was matched up with another receiver. I'm like, hold up now. It, Trent Simpson, you a cornerback? I mean, you got number 23. You look like a corner already. But with Trent Simpson, yeah, they, they take him off the field a lot. And I go, I know you got different packages and stuff with different people on, on the field and whatnot, so I get that. But... Man, like, I, mm, I ain't going to say that, but I really want to, though. But I ain't going to say that. I'm going to just chill. Woo! I really want to, though. You know what? Whatever. We will. I wonder, like, and, and I, I, they, they wouldn't do it because Roquan Smith is the veteran. But if they, and Roquan Smith got a lot of experience. But if they, if they took off Roquan Smith for Trent Simpson and passing pass defense like in obvious passing downs because Trent Simpson can cover the field a lot better than Roquan Smith right now again Roquan Smith he obviously got the knowledge um but you see him like sometimes it'll be right place right time but he just can't make it there uh and we know Roquan he ain't no burner or nothing like that he ain't he ain't got no the speed like that but um I wonder if I know they wouldn't do that though they wouldn't do that and again you, like you, Roquan's a veteran he's been in the game since what 2018 I think uh, Trent Simpson, this is just his second year, so they wouldn't put all that responsibility on him. But they need to find ways to get him on the field more. Um, and, I, again, I know it can be tough 
because you got your different personnel and your different packages and all that. But still, Trent Simpson, when he's given opportunity, he's been he's he's been looking good to me. So I, I figure if if he's been looking good, then why not have him out there more and maybe put a little bit more on his plate. Marlo, next question came from my guy Zega. I hope I pronounced it right. He said, "Yo, my brother, haven't really been watching. I've been busy with our new addition to the flock. We just had a baby boy, but I'm back now. Hey, I, I was getting ready to get on. Y'all getting ready to say, why, why, why are you taking it on me? Because these Ravens frustrated. Don't take it out on team. Keep it clean. Come through, man. But you said you had a new baby boy. Congratulations to you, everybody. Team, keep it clean. Give it up for my guy Zega for having. Uh, give it up for his whole family." For the new addition to the family So congrats to you Seriously my friend Hope everything is going well with him uh, He said anyway All I came to say is Marlo He said it's not even halftime yet So my guy was feeling it During the game Said Marlo with not one But two picks Now we gotta wait to hear How he's feeling tomorrow We need a wide receiver Before we lose Zay Next question came from my guy TJ He said This is why I said We need a wide receiver Opposite Zay Flowers Before we end up losing him For the season Where is Tez Walker I pray the Ravens get Lamar a guy God bless the family The channel And all Ravens Tez Walker, he was on special teams. So he was active. He was on special teams, just not on offense. So Ravens were like, look, you got to crawl. You got to crawl before you even take baby steps, before you even think about walking. So special teams, you say, oh, look, you, you heard that? Before you get to walking. So Tez Walker walking. Anyway, so Tez, Tez, it's going to be a little minute for Tez Walker, but nice start because he had, he had a real nice uh, rep on special teams where he pushed their uh, punt return out of bounds. So, okay, Tez Walker using that speed and that size too to his advantage. But, um, hey, look, we, we talked about Cooper Cup earlier. Ra Ravens got options. DeAndre Hopkins out there, Cooper Cuff's out there, Corlin Sutton possibly out there. We'll see, depending on how the Broncos do. So the Ravens got some options. Or if they want to be like, you know what? We're going to stick with our in-house guys, Nelson Aguilar, Tez Walker. We'll see. You never know what they might do. So we just got to wait on the Ravens.